Welcome to the House of Ham. This is Bob WV7W. In this session, we're going to wind L12 and L14 and install them. So let's start by taking the 26 gauge magnet wire and the large red toroid, and we are going to go ahead and wind L12. Now, L12 is a multi tap inductor. So we're going to do this in a series of stages. We are going to wind up to um, wind number 19, and we're going to put a loop. And then we're going to wind up to um, wind 30 and put another loop. And then wind 36 is our third loop. And then we will finish up with 41 total windings. Now you'll notice I made a note at 10 turns, um, and I apologize that a lot of this doesn't show in the video. I'm not real good <laughs> necessarily at keeping it in camera, but uh, this is what it looks like at the loop at turn 19. And then uh, we'll continue to wind around for um, 21 more turns until we get to wind 30. And then at wind 30, we're gonna put another loop. Now, to make these loops, what I do is I wind the turn around my finger and put it through the toroid, and then I make another loop and cinch it down, and then that way it holds the loop, and then I pinch off the loop. So um, you can see I've got it wrapped around my finger, and then I got one more loop here. And we'll go ahead and wind through another six turns. Um, to where we're at uh, turn 36, and that's where we put our last loop. Um, and then after that, we will complete and wind a few more turns to get to a total of 41 turns for this inductor. L12 is actually four inductors that make up the four um, inductors used in the receiver bandpass filter. So, um, and they're switched in with an integrated circuit as opposed to the low pass filter for the transmitter, which is switched with pin diodes. So the next thing to do is to pinch the ends of these uh, loops together so that they'll fit through the holes in the PC board. Um, you don't need to cut these like you did on the larger one. They should fit if you get them nice and tight uh, point at the end of them. Uh, getting these things actually threaded into the holes and make sure you follow the diagram and put things in the right holes. Um, but uh, the, the tough thing is that getting them to kind of line up, it's a little bit of a test in futility. Uh, if you uh, stick with it, you'll get them in there and get everything lined up. Um, just like I said, make sure you get the right holes. So the last thing for this one is to go ahead and solder it down. Now, remember, we have to burn off the enamel on these. So you've got to get a blob of solder and let it burn off that enamel before you solder it to the board. Uh, you want to make sure you've got a good solder joint um, because we're going to test in the next step the continuity, and we want to make sure we've got good continuity on these. So you want to make sure you get a good, clean solder joint and get all of that enamel burned off. And to finish this off, we're going to check for continuity between pins 9 and 3, 4, 5, and 6. They're all, they should all be connected together if you did this correctly. So you can hold the one lead on pin 9 and then go through the others and make sure you've got good continuity. So next we're going to wind L14, and L14 uses the other all-black uh, T3743 uh, core, and then we're going to use the remainder of our 22-gauge wire, and then we're going to wind a total of 10 turns on this one. And it's not terribly difficult, um, except for the wire is thicker, and uh, you got to just work a little bit harder to get it to go where you want it to go. But we'll get this on there, and that will be um, L14. And as with T1, we're going to scrape the enamel off of this 22 gauge wire so that we can get a nice good joint on it. So um, scrape it all off the, the area that will go through the PCB and uh, 
you know trim off this uh, this other leg and do the same and then we'll go ahead and solder it up and that will be the end of this segment <laughs>